Hi, I recently mentioned that I wanted to build a piece of equipment that would allow me to turn off all of the electrical equipment in the room that I don't need to be on when I'm not in the lab. So things like the soldering irons, the waveform generators, my air compressor, those kind of things don't need to be left turned on. But at the moment, they're all on individual sockets around the room. So when I want to use them, I have to either turn them on or when I want them turned off, I've got to go around and turn off, you know, sort of 20 sockets or so, which can get tedious. And as a result, a lot of those things end up just getting left switched on all the time. So what we're gonna to do today is build a simple piece of electrical equipment that will allow me to just turn them all off with one button. And today's video is sponsored by PCBWay, who have sent through these really nice little Christmas decorations with the colour changing RGB LEDs on them. And these PCBs highlight some of the capabilities for surface finishes that are available at PCBWay, as well as the possibility for removing away the solder mass to reveal either the FR4 material beneath or the copper or immersion gold finish. And you can see that even on the silk screen, we've got really quite a nice amount of detail here. And don't forget, they've got a sale on at the moment on their website with various coupons and giveaways. So take a look at their website if you're considering getting some PCBs made. So here we have the main items that we need to build this piece of equipment. So first of all, we've got the emergency stop button. And the purpose of this is twofold. So first of all, just to be able to turn everything off nice and easily when I leave the lab. But also, if I am in trouble, this will be positioned somewhere easily accessible so I can quickly hit the emergency stop button, hopefully, if something is going wrong. And what this is, is a little plunger button that's attached to two sets of switch contacts. So we've got normally open and normally closed contacts attached to the plunger. And when you press the plunger in, it stays latched in the down position. And then to release it, you twist the knob and it pops back up. But what we're actually building today is a no voltage release safety switch. So that means that in the event of hitting the emergency stop button, not only do you need to release that switch, but we need another button to re-energize the circuit. And that also has an additional safety feature in that if we had a power cut or something to the lab and I left some stuff on, then when the power was returned, the electronics wouldn't actually turn back on until we hit the secondary switch. So we've got a little push button here, which is going to mount in the bottom of the emergency stop button. And when we press that, that will restore power to everything. Then we've got a DIN rail enclosure here. This is quite a small one, and I think we may struggle a little bit with space, but it's uh, what we're working with today. And we've got the two items of DIN rail equipment that are going to fit in this box. So first of all, we've got a 2 amp MCB, and that's just going to protect the control equipment, so the emergency stop button and the contactor. And then we've got the contactor itself, which has a 230 volt coil, and then it's got four sets of contacts, each rated for 20 amps at 230 volts. So we've got plenty of switching capability here. And what we'll just do now is explain the circuit. So here's the circuit, and on the left hand side here is our mains power in, so that's our 230 volts in. And then on the bottom right here is our 230 volts out to our sockets. And then what we've got is our 2 amp control switch, which then goes to our normally closed emergency stop button. So when it's in its released position like this, the contacts that we need to use are the ones that are closed. And then here you can see we've got this little start button, which is a normally open switch, a little push button, and that connects our coil. So what would normally happen is power would be applied it would go through the fuse, through the emergency stop button, and then it would stop at this start button. And only when you press the start button will current flow through the coil and then back to the neutral. And that will energize the coil, switching these normally open contacts in. Now what you'll see is we're actually using one set of contacts here to then latch the relay on. So we've energized the coil. This switch is now closed. And then what will happen is we've got our live conductor here and then that goes through here and powers this coil and then we've got our return current back to neutral. And then at that point, when you release the push button start button, the relay is now latched on and it stays on indefinitely until the point that either the mains power is removed or the emergency stop button is triggered and this switch opens here. And then as you can see, you would then, if you either lost power, you'd have to reapply power and also press the start button because the contacts would now open, 
or if you press the emergency stop button, even when you close the emergency stop button again, you still have to press this start button to reapply power. And then we're just paralleling up the other three contacts here. So we've got our live conductor here, and then it goes through these three sets of contacts to our live conductor out. Now there is another train of thought whereby you could wire these three sets of contacts in series so that if one of the contacts failed closed, you could still remove power with the emergency stops. And that is a valid point. However, the likelihood of those getting fixed closed is only really going to be if we're going to be switching high current items and we manage to weld those contacts closed. And this contactor is rated for significantly higher current than our 13 amp socket that it's going to be plugged into. And with the load being spread across all three terminals, we're also alleviating the load on any one contact at one time. So I think we're okay with this configuration. So unfortunately, I've not really picked the best enclosure, so it's going to be a little bit tight in here. And also, somewhat annoyingly, uh, there's no knockouts in the bottom half of the enclosure. So these items clip onto the plastic din rail at the back, and then the cover goes on, but actually, you have to put your holes for the compression glands in the top half. So it's going to be a little bit of a wiggle to get this in place and pull the wires through so that we can tighten up the compression glands. But then this is going to be mounted under the bench and we'll have the emergency stop button on a piece of flex so that I can move this into a suitable position if I'm going to be doing something that uh, is slightly dangerous. Otherwise, it can just sit at the edge of the bench out of the way. So we're going to start off by wiring up the emergency stop button and to do that, we're going to use some flexible rubber cable. If you've ever used PVC cable of any reasonable diameter, you know that if it doesn't happen to fall correctly when you lay it out, it has a tendency to get a twist in it and then it wants to tip your uh, end point over. And the last thing we want is this falling over at the point where we need to press the button. So we're using rubber cable and we only need three conductors to this box. So it's going to have the stop button here and the start button in the bottom here. So we only need one, two, three conductors going to it, and we're gonna be a little bit naughty. So technically we're not supposed to use an earth conductor for anything other than earth. However, we are in the presence of trained personnel, so we could argue that it's okay to do so, as so long as we sleeve it with some suitable brown sleeving. So what we're gonna do is start putting this together. So we're gonna feed this wire through the top, and I've already slid over the compression gland and always remember to put the lock nut on the other side before you start wiring up the other side of things. So we're going to screw that into place. And we're just using some adhesive lined heat shrink here, just to hold everything in place. And then we should be able to push the button into the bottom of the housing here. And there we go. So that's our start button in place. Right, so that's that all wired up. And then we can uh, just push the wire into place here. And then when we tighten this, what happens is the compression fitting squeezes onto the cable and provides some ingress protection, but also holds the cable quite tight. There we go. So that's that part done. This is all plastic, even this uh, chrome plated plastic up here. So no earth connection required. And then we've got our lead coming out the top with our compression gland. We've got the stop button itself and the start button at the bottom here. And we're using little bootlace ferrules here. They're really good on stranded conductors because it stops the strands from splaying out when you put them into terminals and accidentally shorting out. So you just slide the ferrule over the end of the wire, and then you use a little crimp tool to crimp that in place. And there you can see it's crimped that terminal, holds the wires in place, and then when you insert it into a terminal, there's no chance that any strands can go anywhere. Now, because we're quite short on space, and this enclosure annoyingly doesn't have even a neutral or an earth buzz bar for those connections, we're just using these Wago 221 connectors for things like the earth, which is only connected to the mains coming in and the mains going out and similarly the neutral connections. And these are just little lever connectors. So you lift up the lever, insert your conductor into here, and then when you flip the lever closed, it provides a electrical connection between these three terminals. So you just insert the conductor here, 
flip the lever down and that holds the wire in place and provides the electrical connection. And that was a little bit of a tight squeeze to get everything in there but I think we've got it all in. And there we go. So we can mount that underneath the bench. Now I just need to stick a plug on one of the cables and a trailing socket on the other. And so here's what the inside of the finest electrical plug in the world has. So we've got the three terminals here and a 13 amp fuse that's very tightly gripped inside this MK1363 plug. And so we can just put the lid on and that's that wired up. At the other end of the cable I'm using this MK metal clad socket. These are really nice and really high quality. Unfortunately I can't find the matching bat box for it at the moment. So at the moment we're just going to use a plasterboard box with the cable cable tied in to stop the wires being pulled out. This will be okay for testing. It's still quite difficult for you to get your fingers in and touch anything that's live. So we're using the socket tester that I reviewed in an earlier video to determine if we're getting power to this double socket. We've got the AC supply on the left, so let's plug in the test setup. And as is correctly happening, we're getting no power to this double socket. The emergency stop is actually released, but uh, we haven't pressed the power button yet. So if we push this, it should latch the relay on. And it is doing, you can see also we've wired this up correctly because we've got the two LEDs on. So that's working properly. Next we should be able to hit the stop button and that turns everything off. And even if we release the stop button, we still do not get power. And then if we press the start again, it all turns back on. Now if we press the stop button and press the start button again, we get nothing until we release the stop button. And then if we have a power cut, for example, when we plug it all back in, we should get no power to the socket. Now the reason that that feature is useful is because let's say you had a hot air gun or a hot plate or something that you were using and a power cut occurred at the point where you had that equipment on and you forgot to turn it off because it was already turned off by the power cut. When power was restored, those items could power up and then burn the place down if you're not in the lab at the time. So it's quite handy to have this feature where you have to turn everything back on in, after one of those events. So that all seems to be working properly. This fuse should turn everything off because that's controlling the control wiring. And similarly, you should need to press the start button to power everything back up. So that's all working properly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug all the non-essential equipment into this double socket. So I'm going to get some extension leads and then things like the hot air station, soldering iron, uh, signal generators, those kind of things will be plugged into here. And only things like the PC, the GPS disciplined oscillator, and possibly the six and a half digit multimeters will not be powered through this system. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, you can use the schematic to build your own if you are interested in making one of these things. Uh, the overall cost of goods, I think the most expensive part was this emergency stop button. But I actually got this one on eBay, so I think I only paid about £10 for this. Contactor was £15, the MCB was about £5, the enclosure was a tenner, and then a double socket. So nothing too expensive, and now it should make things a lot more straightforward in the lab. So hopefully you found the video useful. Leave any comments down below if you've got any. Uh, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.